My philosophy is all you end up becoming is a memory. Why not become a good one? I grew up in a railroad flat on the corner of Midwood Street and Nostrand Avenue in the East Flappish section of Brooklyn. It was directly over Harry's Laundry. When I was 11 years old, I joined my older brother Jimmy to form Harry's Pool of Delivery Boys. In the warm months, we kept our windows open, so Harry didn't even have to ring the doorbell if he needed one of us. He just stepped out of the store, cupped his hands to his mouth, and called out, any of you boys want to earn maybe 15 cents to deliver a bundle? Now, 15 cents, as the decade of the 60s started, was a magical number. Each 15 cents could buy you a large soda, or a slice of, of delicious pizza, or a token for a ride on the subway. In those days, laundry bags were a rarity. You carried the clean clothes in a pillowcase. Oh, it always smelled fresh from Harry. And it was quite often warm from the dryer. Harry had a reputation for getting the dirtiest clothes sparkling clean. Even the sanitation workers brought their dirty work clothes to him. My mother said it was because he was very generous with the amount of bleach he would use for the white clothes and the blue he would use for the colored ones. Eventually, Jimmy and I advanced to additional, more specialized duties under Harry's guidance. Jimmy would sit in the back room and fill cases of the individual bottles of bleach and blue. He'd do it by inserting a slender tube and unclip it into each bottle. It was precision work. Harry made sure he washed his hands thoroughly after handling the chemicals. And he always kept the side door open towards Midwood Street for ventilation. When it snowed, Jimmy would shovel a vital path around Harry's store. Harry had this formula where he paid him according to the number of inches that fell. It's been over 50 years since I've worked for Harry. I can close my eyes and still see the bold lettering on his glass front door. Harry Kimmelman's Laundry. I can still see that tall, energetic, silver-haired man. Oh, I should say, I had a special duty with Harry, too. Saturday was my day to shine, for that's the day I got Harry his precious lunch. I'd have to walk four blocks north towards the city. I'd have to go by magnificent St. Francis of Assisi Roman Catholic Church that occupied the entire street between Maple Street and Lincoln Road to the delicatessen by the Sterling Street subway. I can still remember his exact instructions. I want a corned beef on club, must be lean, with half sour pickle and a celery soda. I always pronounced it celery soda. Years later, I found out it actually did contain celery seeds. Sometimes he would substitute two chicken salami sandwiches on rye for the corned beef. That was light years away from my favorite of stuffed grape leaves or mom's Sunday dinner spaghetti and meat sauce. Yes, it's been 50 years since I worked for Harry and I can still see that bold lettering on his glass front door, Harry Kimmelman's Laundry. I can still see that tall, energetic, silver-haired man busily attending to his beloved machines. Imagine that the smell of bleach can bring back such sweet memories. <laughs> I echo Bob Hope's theme song, Thanks for the Memory. And I add, Harry, you were a great laundryman and a good an honorable man. Thank you. <laughs>